Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna do a welfare analysis of a firm that has monopoly power. That's right, we've got a monopoly and now we're gonna do a welfare analysis. Just to be a little bit more clear, be a little bit more nuanced, really what we mean when we say monopoly power is we're saying market power. We kind of use those two terms interchangeably. And what we're talking about is a firm that has market power or monopoly power is a firm that it basically has a monopoly on the exact good that they are producing. Now, you could have a lot of close substitutes, and if that's the case, you've got monopolistic competition, but still, the firm is the market, the market is the firm, even with monopolistic competition, or you could have a situation that the the you know, firm has monopoly power, of course, over a good, and there's no close su substitutes. And then we just call that a monopoly, not monopolistic competition, but just a monopoly. But anyhow, what I'm doing here is I'm doing a welfare analysis for any firm that has market power or monopoly power. And that's what this graph is showing generically, okay? So the firm is the market, the market is the firm. So this is the demand market and demand firm. And you should see right off the bat that we're assuming no price discrimination and what tells you that is our MR curve is twice the slope as demand. So we're assuming no price discrimination. Now, with that said, we're gonna go ahead and find kind of our P and Q. You can see I've actually got the Q already labeled up here. The way that, you can see I got the P also, but generally how you do that, how you find the P and Q is you need the big three curves, and these are the big three curves. MCMR, they give you output, right? So you go to MCMR, that's where they intersect. That's your output. And once you now have the output, you wanna go find the price. Basically what you're saying is what's the maximum the firm can charge to sell this exact level level of output, what gives you that is the demand curve. That's So you take that Q straight up to the demand curve. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, bring that up there and draw that over. Now we've got our P and Q for our firm that has market power. Let's get to the welfare analysis. Now, I'm gonna make this slightly more complicated. Don't worry, I'm, it's gonna be easy. I'm gonna be straightforward, but I'm gonna get into a little bit of a, a complexity here. Hope that you like it, okay? Because it's kind of interesting. So what I'm gonna start off is, with is producer surplus because that's where this little interesting twist is, okay? The general way that we're gonna do producer surplus is gonna be actually quite straightforward. I'll get to the twist in a second. Is you're just saying, look, the, here's my marginal cost curve. So this is the cost of producing each one of these goods. It's being shown vertically, that's the cost. Now, now, what's the benefit that the firm gets by selling those goods? It's the price. We generally say the price is the benefit. And say, so okay, what's the difference between the benefit that they're getting for each good? So remember, they're getting this much benefit up to the price for each good. You take that, subtract off the cost, and you're left with surplus. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of do it with my hand right here. This is gonna be our producer surplus, right? Producer surplus, producer surplus. Guys, nothing's gonna be produced to the right of the queue, so there's gonna be no surplus to anybody to the right of the queue. You can't have surplus where there's not a good, and this is all the goods that's being produced. Keep that in mind. No surplus is gonna happen over there, and of course, no surplus underneath the marginal cost curve. Now, here's that kind of interesting twist that you're never probably gonna do, but I think it's interesting to understand, is there is another way to show producer surplus, okay? You're still gonna stay with the same MC, but instead of seeing that um, benefit of each good being the price, you can actually see it as MR. The marginal revenue curve is a marginal benefit curve, if you will, right? Revenue is a benefit, right? There's profit, benefit minus cost is profit. Revenue minus cost is profit. Revenue is a benefit. So literally, now just take a look at this. You're never gonna be asked to do this, but this right there, to the MC right there. So just like that, if you were to do that area, that would be producer surplus. And what's very interesting is this area of that is gonna be exactly equal to the area of this right there. It's gonna be exactly equal, okay? So you can base it off the price, which you should and probably be asked to do on an AP test or in your 101. You're gonna say, hey, just look at the price as the marginal benefit to the firm, but you could identify producer surplus or find that area by focusing on the MR curve, but that will take you right up into this area. And the reason why most AP or 101 classes don't want you to do that is that makes your analysis much 
but kind of messier because we really want to associate these two areas, hopefully you know, with consumer surplus. If you did not know that, let me, uh, let me kind of make sure that we understand. Price to the consumer is a cost. So the price is showing the cost of acquiring each good. The demand curve represents the benefit, right? All demand curves are marginal benefit curves. Actually, let me go ahead and put that in here. Demand is MPB. We're going to assume no uh, externality. So this is going to be also MSB, okay? So anyhow, the demand curve shows the benefit. The price is the cost. The difference between the two are the, is the consumer surplus. So there's my consumer surplus, and here's my producer surplus. Again, no surplus to the right of this Q. You can't have surplus if you don't have a good produced, and all the goods that we are producing are up to right there. Now, the problem is market power is a market failure, okay? We're gonna under allocate resources to production of the good. Assuming no externalities, that would make this the MSC, and I've already got this, the MSB. MSC intersects MSB right there. You bring that down, okay? Q opt, that's my Q opt. We are under producing this good, okay? Under allocating resources to production of the good. And that makes this triangle, and just go ahead and write this in real quick. This is my MSB. This is my MSC. We actually want these goods to be produced, okay, to get maximum social surplus. Why? Because the societal or total benefit to society is greater than this total cost to society or the societal cost. This right here is actually going to be our deadweight loss. Again, market power is a market failure. And that's your welfare analysis, okay? We're going to have, with, with no intervention, this, this is just a straightforward one, no price discrimination, no intervention by the government, this is what we're going to get. We're going to get consumer surplus right there, then you're going to get the producer surplus right here, no surplus to the right, so we're missing out on this potential surplus. That'd be the deadweight loss. I hope that makes sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.